Hey fam, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I would like to return to the absurdities of bizarro fiction with you with The Unyielding by Gary J. Shipley. Okie dokie. So it's been a minute. Why don't we go back over the synopsis? Because I feel like the only thing I've been saying about this book for a while now is that it's been fucking with my head. <laughs> so let's get to it. Something is horribly wrong with my wife. She doesn't move anymore. When I try to lift her, I can't. It's like she's glued to the floor or impaled on something. But her body keeps randomly appearing around the house in contorted positions, face down in the hallway, at the end of our daughter's bed, and on the ceiling of the main room, her feet, hands, and backside flat to the plaster. There is a cold, translucent slime coating her skin. The scent of her is intense and repugnant, and yet I am finding myself increasingly drawn to her. I have a desire to merge with her. The children, too, want to be near her. Sitting on top of her brings them comfort as they stare at their tablets and phones. We stop going to work and to school. We feed from her. We begin to change. And we are not the only ones. The Unyielding is a darkly surreal tale that details what happens to a family when one of its members becomes immovable, an entity that while corpse-like is also spatially inconsistent, oddly nutritious, and excessively seductive to surrounding humans. If you've ever wondered what philosophical pessimism looks like in the flesh, it looks like this. I love this cover so much. Maybe I should have chosen this one to be my favorite cover of the year so far because it's fucking drew me in. Anyway, in true bizarro fashion, this story is a bit like a fragmented dream. Like it flows a bit like a fever dream. <laughs> like there are even sentences where it's like, I know these words, they're, they're real words. They're real, they have meaning. I don't know exactly why they're together or like there's a word missing or something. And if I were to like look away at any point from, you know, being deep in thought or being distracted, like I kept losing my place. Do you know how many pages I reread because I kept fucking losing my place and not being able to, it's all such a blur, you know what I mean? Like there's no chapter breaks. It's paragraphs and sentences, baby. And it's not like Selby Jr. or anything like that. It's not quite the same. Like there's grammar and stuff. There's stuff. <laughs> At one point I wondered if he has experience in the gaming industry because he used the term ad hoc. And that's the only time I ever hear that term. And I haven't heard that term in a good three years and I'm kind of my eyeball twitched. <laughs> I am still burnt out. Thanks, Gary. Now I know. If I was confused, I'm not anymore. Every single person has emailed me and been like, yo, you should you, you should come talk with us. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to. And it's like in this fragmented dream state, Gary really likes to lull you, right? And the next thing you know, it escalates and you're like, fuck, Gary. And like... <laughs> <laughs> just damn it <laughs> I um I use this book for one of the prompts in the school days book tag I uh right after I teased Lady Jane over at Lady Jane books about pie I reached the point where mom becomes sustenance and like listen I can eat spaghetti watching horror, not a problem. I think that most of us, we know it's fake. So we're more likely to be like, yo, who was the makeup artist? Holy shit, right? But like, bleh. Gary got me in the hut with this shit. Like, ugh, bleh. Had ugh. so too much drink at this point, I am cutting you off. 
<laughs> yeah. That, mm, I didn't like it, and I'm sorry. I never should have brought it up. <laughs> I think it actually took me like half the book before I realized that there were no chapter breaks, so have fun with that. <laughs> And the ending ended up sneaking up on me. I wasn't ready. And then I just kind of sat there like. <laughs> so, yeah, so much can happen in just a single page. <laughs> so, yeah, if you like body, I consider this body horror. Maybe I'm just I don't know enough body horror. That's that's fair. That's fair. I think I do. Don't we all, though? Whatever. Um, but yeah, if you're into that kind of shit, if you're into, you know, absurdities and bizarro and anything like that, give it a go. I do recommend giving it a go. It's interesting and some people like having their heads fucked with. That's valid. So, you know, if you're down for it, it's like a hundred pages. It's good old bizarro fiction. Um, yeah, give it a whirl. You should at least, if you're into that shit, you should at least read this one. It's worth it. It's a rumply in my tongue, holy fucking shit. So yeah, I'm feeling a little feisty today. I don't know if you can tell. My old boss at that fucking last QA position that I had, she's, she was like, she called to me from the other side of the cubicle wall, like, Amy, I shouldn't be telling you this, but there's a shirt on this website and you need to order it. And I was like, Linky Poo. And I was like, you were right. <laughs> So here it is. <laughs> That's what it's like working in the gaming industry. <laughs> so until next time and beyond, please take care. And I will try as well.